This is Damon Fordham, adjunct professor of history at Charleston Southern University in Charleston, South Carolina, as well as at the Citadel, and an author and historian. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about a very disturbing but interesting role in local history, the Sugar House that existed in Charleston from about 1775 until the end of slavery. Now, if you ever go down by Magazine and Logan Streets in downtown Charleston today, there's a reminder of the expression that goes, if these streets could talk, they have quite a tale to tell. And one of the tales that they would tell around that location is the story of what was once known as the Sugar House. This is how the building looked when it was in operation. It was right next to where the Old County Jail sits at the corner of Magazine and Logan Streets, next to the, field, the Fielding Home for Funerals, as well as the Robert Mills Projects. Now, this uh, sugar house originally was built according to the Charleston News and Courier of December the 27th, 1931. It says, and I quote, Before the American Revolution, there was on this ground a sugar house for the manufacturing of loaf sugar. About 1775, this was converted into a workhouse. Slaves were sent to the sugar house for punishment and advertisements for runaway slaves uh, asked that they be returned to the workhouse. Whoa. Henry Brown, who was a slave in 1937 that was in a former slave, should I say, in 1937, he was interviewed by Augustus Ladson, an African-American who was interviewing formerly enslaved people in Charleston. And, he and, he and, uh, Henry and uh, Ladson, recalling that uh, Henry Brown, said these words, No slave was supposed to be whipped in Charleston except at the sugar house. Mm. Well, how bad was the sugar house? Well, uh, Susanna Ashton, who was a colleague of mine and a professor of history at the Citadel, or some, excuse me, a professor at uh, Clemson University in South Carolina, she found a slave narrative of a man by the name of James Matthews who would escape from the sugar house. And this is what he had to say about that. I have heard a great deal said about hell and wicked places, but I don't think that there is any worse hell than the sugar house. It is a, as bad a place as can be. In getting to it, you have to go through a gate in a very high brick wall. On the top of the wall, both sides of the gate, there are sharp pointed iron bars sticking up and all along the rest of the wall are broken glass bottles. These are to keep us from climbing over. After you get into the yard, you go through a, you go through a gate into the entry through, then through a door of wood, and then an iron door, chained and locked together. So both is, so is both to open at the same time. The tower story is built of, st of stone and great thickness, and above brick. The building is sealed inside a plank. Away down the ground under the house is a dungeon, very cold and dark, so you can't tell the difference between day and night. There are six or seven big rooms and six little cells above and six below, below the room, to do the whipping is by itself. When you get in there, everywhere you look, you can see paddles and whips and cow skins and blue jays and cat and nine tails. The blue jay has two lashes, very heavy and filled with knots. It is the worst thing to whip with anything they have. It makes a hole where, I, where it strikes, and when they have done it, I will be all bloody. Whoa. That's no joke, folks. Well, another interesting story in regard to uh, the Sugar House. And, oh, this James Matthews, by the way. He eventually escaped up to Maine, as a matter of fact, where, according to Susanna Ashton, she died some, he died sometime in the later part of the 1800s. But another good story about the Sugar House comes from this very interesting book. Janie Mitchell, Reliable Cook, which was an ex slaves recipe for living from 1862 to 1931. Uh, a late, you see, many years, many years uh, ago, Janie Mitchell, who was a 
a member of Mother Emanuel AME Church in Charleston. Yes, that Mother Emanuel. In 1937, she served on a float in Charleston's Emancipation Day Parade and was moved to write about her life growing up from slavery in 1862 until 1931. She wrote a journal that was later turned into a book by uh, Lisa Foster and Mary Lou Murray Combs that was published by the Charleston Evening Post Press. Anyway, she told of a man who went to, was sent with a note to the sugar house, and the man was under the impression that he was going to get sugar. But he asked someone to read the note to him because see, he was illiterate and he kind of figured something funny was going on. And when the man read the note to him, the master had written that it wanted him to be, it wanted the man to be beaten at the sugar house. So needless to say, he ran away and was never beaten. You see, these folks may have been illiterate, but they had sense. In either case, though, whenever you go by Magazine and Logan Streets, if you're in the Charleston, South Carolina, think about what used to be there at the Sugar House. And when you consider the condition that you live in today and consider how things were in the Sugar House, well, the difference is something to consider. This is Damon Fordham talking about the Sugar House of Charleston.